toddlers, teenagers, young adults, middle-aged, elderly. We all have this in common. We like food and we need food. As we grow, we change and the camera lets us keep a record. Photographs recall important moments in our life. The first day at school. The last childhood holiday. The 21st. The new baby. And sooner than they expect, parents are getting presents from their grandchildren. This life cycle raises questions for all of us. How do our bodies adapt to the changing demands of age? Above all, what does that mean for our diet? We know a lot more about food and eating than we did a century ago. Scientists have given us estimates of how our energy needs change for different groups and for both sexes. Here are some examples for males from within the age ranges they used. In the same way, our nutrient intake changes. Here's protein, for example. This is for iron. And this is for vitamin C. These estimates are called the dietary reference values and they are the average needs at each age range. They demonstrate that the needs of one age group differ from another and may differ between individuals of the same age. Most of us don't know much about dietary reference values, but we do know what we like. I like ham, uh, potatoes. I like vegetables, courgettes and stuff. I like Italian food, Chinese food, and good English cooking as well. Oh, I like the old fashioned, you know, Yorkshire puddings, meat, tea, pie, and all that. Junk food, um, uh, vegetables, um, meat. Just about anything. I mean, I'm not fatty, I'll eat just about anything and enjoy it greatly. But do we know the foods um, our body needs? So, lots of vegetables and fruits and carbohydrates, stuff like pasta and things like that. Well, fresh stuff generally, no pre-packed food. We've got junk food like burgers and things like that. Anything without meat, basically, or fish or meat products. We just try and eat a healthy, balanced diet. We know that's sensible, even if we don't all manage to apply it. But what dietary reference values show is that the balance doesn't stay the same. It changes through life. In pregnancy, the early years, when we're growing up, adolescence, maturity, and when we're old. In fact, it changes right through the life cycle. A family outing, and everyone at a different stage of life. What they have in common is that they all need the same nutrients. They differ because they need different amounts. This mother-to-be has two to feed, herself and the unborn child. The fetus is connected to the mother's bloodstream via a cord attached to the placenta. That's the tissue which selects the nutrients the fetus needs from the mother's blood. For instance, calcium for healthy bones. The mother can get more calcium from a glass of milk than she can from a glass of orange juice. Here are the figures to prove it. But orange juice contains more iron. And of course, orange juice has more vitamin C. For healthy blood and for growth, the fetus needs iron and vitamins. And of course, a whole range of other nutrients too. An unborn baby can't make a choice, so the mother's shopping list must include a variety that provides the full range of nutrients. The woman's body changes to support her pregnancy and later the newborn child. 
there are changes in weight, in blood volume, and in the breasts. And the body becomes more energy efficient. What type of pudding, though? She doesn't have to double what she eats, but she does need the variety of food which gives the right balance of protein, carbohydrate, fat, vitamins, and minerals. She needs some dietary fiber as well. And what does the newborn baby need? He needs milk, preferably straight from the mother's breast or specially manufactured baby milk. Certainly not cow's milk, which is good for calves, but not young babies. Breast milk is best because it helps protect the baby against disease. Manufactured milks may contain all the nutrients, but they can't offer that protection. When the baby grows older, milk won't be enough because the needs of the body alter. This, for example, shows how our need for iron changes throughout life. You can see the big increase in the first year. So the child must learn to eat other foods. We call this weaning. As children grow and meet new foods, they soon develop favourite tastes. Oh, pizza, sometimes a bit of salt fish and ackee, just a bit, it's Jamaican food. Rice and peas and chicken. The Sunday dinner that my grandma makes, sweets. Most children like sweets and crisps, and if they ate nothing but these, they would get lots of energy. But they'd miss out on a lot of other nutrients, and it wouldn't be good for their teeth. And it wouldn't be the right way to prepare for adolescence when the body needs more energy and nutrients than at any other time of life. But do adolescents really know the nutrients their bodies need? You need stuff to make you grow. Fat, protein, stuff like that. Enough of each vitamin and starch and things to keep yourself healthy. You need to eat more fibre, more proteins, just as long as you've got a varied diet of like vitamins and minerals and things. Just everything for a balanced diet. Well, not exactly a strike. The important thing is that at this age, the needs of boys and girls are different. They both need more iron because they're developing more muscles, so the blood volume increases. But when a girl menstruates, she loses blood so her need for iron increases still further. Compare the woman's need for iron throughout the life cycle with the man. It's markedly different. Do you know the foods which are good sources of iron? Well, here's a selection. We won't get our diet right just by knowing about dietary reference values. They don't tell us about the nutrients in food, but there's plenty of information about that does. Have a look at leaflets like these, or look at the labels on foods. When we're young, we generally take plenty of exercise and use up a lot of energy. But this may not be true in later life. We probably become less active. Work changes our eating habits and our lifestyle. Of course, there are people who go on taking lots of exercise, but most don't, so they don't need as much energy as they used to. The problem is, they eat as if they do. People can end up eating too much, and sometimes too much of just one sort of food. By the time we reach old age, we can get pretty fixed ideas about what we like to eat. Uh, steak and chips. A marmalade sandwich. I have yogurts. I love yogurts. Any way it's cooked, I love it. No chips. Fruit, uh, rice, fish. You know, things like that. No cakes or biscuits. My daughter says I'm the best person in the world to feed. There's nothing I don't like. Cooking for her must be easy. 
but what does her body actually require? In old age, the muscles generally become smaller and less energy is needed. But the dietary reference values show us that it's not a great deal less. And there's more repair work to be done on the body. So that means the intake of nutrients should be maintained. Healthy eating is still important. At every stage of life, we think we have clear ideas of what we should be eating. But how much do we really know? I only eat kosher food. We try and eat as much organic as we can. No pre-packed food, or as little as possible. Not too much frozen food, not too much tin stuff. I like milk. I drink a lot of milk. I don't eat beef burgers. I don't eat anything like that. We don't live in a society where we need meat. I think it's bad for you. I do actually eat red meat. I think it's disgusting. Good old Yorkshire pudding, you know, roast beef. I uh, try to have a uh, balanced diet. Our attitudes to food are formed early on. Young children can be very choosy about what they eat. Teenagers often go for fast food. Concern for appearance can affect our diet. We may wish to be vegetarian, but a particular diet should not reduce the variety of foods we choose to eat. By middle age, well over a third of the British population is overweight. It's a clear sign that a lot of us aren't getting it right. Of course, exercise is good for everyone, but we have to think about our diet too. The fact is, eating is enjoyable. Eating out is a great social occasion, but we still need to give a moment's thought to what we are eating and what it will do for us. Money and social conditions may affect what we choose to eat, but whatever our circumstances, we can still eat a healthy diet. And I went on my own, like, uh, I didn't bother much. I let me sing go. I'll be honest, I think the biggest partners at our age do. You let it sing go, you can't be bothered, you know. But healthy eating does matter. His memories stretch back to the First World War, and even in that time we've learnt to make many connections between poor diet and disease. These children, for example, they stand straight and tall because their parents were told that calcium from milk and vitamin D would protect them from rickets. Today, we're blessed with a huge variety of food. So it should be easy to eat what we like and still get the balance right. All it needs is some guidelines about how our nutritional needs change with age and information about the energy and nutrients that are in the food. It's just a matter of using the labels and shopping around.